Good evening, everyone. So today we're going to be continuing our joint health series. We're going to look at Boswellia serrata and joint health. And we're going to take, again, a systems biology approach. So what is Boswellia serrata? It's called Indian frankincense. It's grown in dry mountainous regions of India, North Africa, and Middle East. So if you've heard of the three wise men, remember the story of Jesus' birth, they brought him frankincense. Well, this is what we're talking about. The Indian frankincense, Boswellia serrata, is what was brought to Christ among the various other gifts that were brought when he was born. You can call it a herb, but it's more specifically, it's the resin, it's a gum resin. It's a very sticky, sappy thing, and it's extracted from the bark. And this has been employed in traditional medicine for over 2,700 years. When it dries, it becomes this hard sort of crystalline structure, but it's a gum resin. That's what Basilia serrata is. So when it comes to joint health, about three years ago, I was asked to give a lecture at the Arthritis Foundation International Meeting. And and I gave a whole discussion about cytosolvate's power. Three of the leading researchers in the world on joint health and osteoarthritis were very excited. And I said, Dr. Shiva, we would like to fund you to use cytosol to map out all the molecular pathways of joint health or osteoarthritis, which is a bigger field. And so it was awesome, right? We get to do what we love. We also get paid to do it. And so the Arthritis Foundation gave us this great grant along with the University Health Network of Canada. Great group of people, some of the smartest people in the field. But what what we could do with Cytosol, it would take them 100 graduate students. We did in about a couple of years. So we looked at nearly 22,000 papers that were written on osteoarthritis. We curated all those papers, which had to do with human knee arthritis, which is around six to 7,000 papers. And from those, we extracted every molecular reaction. So think about that. And then we interconnected all of that to create the first molecular systems map of osteoarthritis. Quite revolutionary, quite radical. And then we did something even more radical. Instead of just holding on to that knowledge for ourselves, we published it and we gave it to the world. So you can go access it, any researcher, anywhere in any university, any academia, any citizen scientist can do it because our idea is if we publish this interconnected systems approach, maybe some person in a village who's studying has access to the internet will discover something about some herb, etc. So that's what we've done. But using this map, we've started modeling pieces. We started finding our own combinations. MV25 is one of our new products that we've just discovered. It's quite amazing. What's happened is when I talk to you about joint health, I'm going to walk you through one of the things we did was we published this paper called Molecular Systems Architecture of Human Knee Ar Osteoarthritis a research collaboration. We published this. You can get the research paper, but we've also open sourced it. It's part of our open science project, Boswellia serrata. Just to give you an idea, it's an emerging dietary supplement. In the case of this, we don't have as many papers written on this. We have about 699 papers written on it, quite a number of clinical trials, close to 57 different clinical trials over 52 years. That means about one clinical trial per year, a lot of clinical trials, but not that many major research papers relative to the other, still a good amount, 699. In the last 15 years, you can see the explosive amount of research that's been done on Basilia. People are very interested in this. That's why we call it an emerging dietary supplement. So what we do with Cytosol is we can take all of those papers, then we organize them, meaning we found the papers that have to do with joint health, right? That's curating, and if they're written in decent journals or they were garbage, so we do an analysis. Then from those papers, we extract out these molecular pathways, which are little ball and stick diagrams, which really show the chemical reactions. So if you read a paper, somewhere in the paper, they'll have this ball and stick diagram, these chemical reactions. So what we try to do at Cytosol, we try to get that out. So now that gives gives us a mechanistic understanding of what's going on. Then the next step we do is once we've gotten that, we then understand the overall system relative to joint health. And then we can do mathematical models to figure out how well does the ingredients, in this case, frankincense or Boswellia, affect those molecular pathways. I wanted to let you know that we use the technology here. We've helped many, many companies over the last 16 years, a lot of smart, innovative companies, but we decided with all the mathematical models we've created, why don't we try to use this to compute the best product we could think of from the science out there for reducing pain and inflammation, pain and discomfort. And that resulted in us creating MV25 using Cytosol. We're going to have more products that are going to be coming, but let me just show you what MV25 is about for those of you who haven't heard about it. But this is using Cytosol in a beneficial way, not to just do research, but find combination therapies. I am Barbara Ann. My hands would cramp up so that I couldn't hold cards or knit or crochet. And they would go like that. Not have to use this. 
when I played cards with my grandkids. And I started taking that MV25. After a bit, I was able to hold cards in my hand. Very, very little cramping, hardly at all anymore. MV25. Hi, my name is Sandy. I'm a Taekwondo instructor. I tore my ACL during Taekwondo. I had a lot of pain and limited mobility. I've been taking the MV25 for about six months now. After the first week, I noticed a big difference. After the second week, almost literally no pain. My name is Jeremy and I suffer from a lower back problem. Hurt my back at work years ago and I can go to the chiropractor, do all kinds of different things and nothing seems to help. And I decided to try MV25. I didn't notice a difference immediately, but within a few days the pain went away and it stayed away. I've continued to take it and even when I do things that I shouldn't do, it seems to go away a lot quicker than it ever did before. It's clean food certified, it's made in the US. If you go to vashiva.com right on the shop, you'll click there or you can go right to mv25.life either way. And then from there, you can click on the bottle and you can order. If you buy six bottles, you get six bottles for free. Please take advantage of it because first of all, it's gonna help you, it's gonna help our movement, and it really supports the fact that we wanna take science-based approaches to natural products. All right, let's go to Boswellia Serrata. Boswellia Serrata really is composed of five major components. It has the monoterpenes, the diterpenes, the diterpene alcohol, which is the alcohol version of it, triterpenes, and tri terpenic acid. So you have various organic compounds. That These four boswellic acids have the proven functional benefits. What are the biological effects of these components? Anti-inflammatory, anti-hyperlipidemic, very good for burning fat, anti-atherosclerotic for people who have atherosclerosis, heart things, analgesic. And some of you who've smelled it, I know it has sort of a very calming effect. It's against pain. Hepatoprotective, which means it protects the liver and diuretic, which means if you're having problems urinating, it'll get water out of your system. But anti-inflammatory, anti-hyperlipidemic, anti arthrosclerotic, analgesic, hepatoprotective, and diuretic. And again, this is coming from the known science. And here are the health benefits, diarrhea, dysentery, ringworms, fevers, mouth sores, bronchitis, and asthma. So if we go to cytosol.com, slash human knee, osteoarthritis, you can go here. And by the way, the paper's right here. You can download it. And then we can literally click on this graph right here. So you can read the paper, but we've also made this accessible to anyone on the planet. So you can go here, you can go to the osteophytes, which are a tissue. You can go to the ligands on it, which are the things that land on it. You can look at different cytokines, for example, I1 beta, and you can find the different things that it interacts with. If you go to something like cartilage over here, cartilage has chondrocytes, which are the cells, chondrocytes, many different molecules, which are ligands, can interact with that. The cytokines, there's a whole range of cytokines. For example, here's TNF alpha, a very, very inflammatory cytokine. We can go here and we can look at the stress effect it has. Then you can literally go into this and you can find out all the molecular pathways involved in that, right? So TNF alpha causes ERN1, and then you can click this and it'll bring you over to the actual paper having to do with that. It's a simple example, but we can also get more complicated than this. We can look at something, another cytokine, which is very, very well-researched called IL-1 beta. All these are the molecules that upregulate it. Here is MMPP13, which I've looked at before. Here's COX-2. COX-2 causes inflammation. And if you go here, we can start looking at the different things that COX-2 is involved in. I, actually, I'm gonna go here to MMPP13, and we're gonna look at the catabolic effect. So we can look at all of these different molecules, and you can look at the different effects that they have. So here's IL-1 beta which creates MMPP9. And you can look at the ways that different molecules interact and they stop their interaction. This is a root extract of Woganin, which actually suppresses IL-1. So basically, this is a very powerful way for you to understand all the research that's been done in a graphical way on osteoarthritis. So what we did here was, for the sake of this example, we took that entire system's map and we went and looked at, okay, what are the key things that affect joint health? And what you'll find out is the key things, which I've talked about before, to keep it consistent, inflammation, oxidative stress, cartilage degeneration, and cartilage regeneration. So if you wanna have great joint health, you don't wanna have inflammation, right? So these are those pathways. You don't wanna have oxidative stress. You don't wanna have cartilage degeneration. So these are those molecular pathways, but you wanna regenerate your cartilage. That would be a good thing. Red arrows mean you wanna downregulate these and you wanna increase 
cartilage regeneration. There are two molecules, PGE2 and LTB4, which are indicators of inflammation in your body. These are molecules. ROS is reactive oxygen species, which is an indicator of oxidative stress. Cartilage degeneration, MMPP13, and collagen 2 for cartilage regeneration. So Boswellia serrata, what's its effect on joint health? Well, this is what the research shows. This is what's quite valuable. Out of all those things, Boswellia serrata, Indian frankincense, has a very powerful effect in lowering inflammation. And it's one of the mechanisms. That's why someone wrote up there, I think one of you said, hey, I take Boswellia with turmeric. That's a very good combination. Turmeric lowers inflammation, Boswellia lowers inflammation. Now with Cytosol, we could actually figure out the dosages. We can run through billions of computations figuring out the right dosage. That's what's cool about Cytosol versus trying to hand wave it. Beta BA and AKBA from Boswellia lower inflammation. So remember what I shared with you, let me just go back. There are two molecules here that lower inflammation. These two molecules, okay. beta BA and AKBA, these two things stop inflammation. Well, how do they work? We're gonna now explore how it affects PG2 and LTB4. Now the inflammatory cytokine TNF alpha, TNF alpha is a hallmark of joint disease. So right there, TNF alpha. TNF alpha promotes five locks in COX-2. So TNF alpha through AKT and NF kappa beta, so five locks leads to production LTB4 production. And so you notice AKT produces NF kappa beta, NF kappa beta produces five locks in COX-2, and this produces LTB4 and PG2. These are the two criminals here that invade your body and they cause joint inflammation, okay? So five locks leads to LTB4 and COX-2 leads to PG2, right? And AKB and beta B from Boswellia serrata right here, what do they do? They block it. And Boswellia serrata lowers inflammation through doing two things. It down regulates this and this, and that's how you do it. But it is because it's it's hitting this pathway. It's not hitting TNF alpha directly, it's hitting AKT. So just to step back again, what I just shared with you is that is a bioinformatics side. The bioinformatics side says, okay, it looks like from all the literature and all the analysis that Boswellia serrata hits the AKT pathway with both those two components. But now with Cytosol, not only can we do that, we can go even deeper. We can mathematically model this to figure out even further to get to even closer to truth, okay? It's a system within a systems approach, okay? So here we do the computational analysis. On the y-axis, we're looking at LTB4, which is a biomarker, if you remember, right here of five locks. And we're giving different dosages, 2.5 to 5 milligrams per day. We're increasing the dosage of AKBA in a product dose. And what you're seeing is, yes, def definitively it drops, okay? It goes from about 48.4 micromolar and it reduces to around here, around 47. So it has some effect. So LTB4 levels reduce with increasing in AKBA. That's one of the nutrients. Then we looked at what AKBA does to PG2. And what we see here, it doesn't do much. So remember, there's two components, AKBA and beta BA. So it looks like the beta BA component really reduces inflammation, but the AKBA does not do a lot on PGE2. Then we looked at beta BA on LTB4, right? So this was AKBA. Beta BA drops it and it's reduced, but it has low to moderate. Look, it goes from 48.43 to 40. It's relatively low and it doesn't do that much for PGE2. So our conclusion is that it's the LTB4 inflammation that it actually reduces, and that's done through AKBA or beta BA. It's AKBA. AKBA is what really reduces the inflammation in the joints. What I'm trying to say here is that if you really step back and look at this, there are two components, as you can see here, the AKBA and beta BA. So the AKBA is what seems to have a powerful effect from not only the bioinformatics analysis, but from the computational analysis and lowering inflammation. So in summary, we'll come back to this again, the Boswellia serrata lowers inflammation. It doesn't really do a lot for oxidative stress or cartilage degeneration or cartilage regeneration. So if you're looking at a joint health product and they say, oh, we're gonna give you frankincense, it's gonna do wonders for joint health. Just remember, that's to reduce the inflammation, okay? It's not gonna do everything for you. So that's something important to realize. And that's what the analysis here shows. But more importantly, it is the AKBA, okay? So if you're looking at supplements with frankincense, make sure it has a lot of the AKBA in the conditions that it was grown because that'll give you much more of a powerful effect. So look, Boswellia increases Vatha. 
which is transport, motion, right? Energy. It stabilizes pitta, which means supports digestion, and it reduces kapha, which means this will basically help reduce weight, kapha, storage, weight. What should the dosaging be on Boswellia serrata? From the literature, the maintenance dose by Siddiqui is about 125 milligrams per day. For pain, 450 to 750 milligrams per day of the boswellic acids. Remember the ones we discussed. Now, for osteoarthritis, you can get the resin extract, 40 milligrams per day. That's also Siddiqui. But this goes right to pain. This has helped you really reduce the pain and inflammation. All right. So in summary, Boswellic serrata helps joint health by reducing inflammation. It's hyperlipidemic, which means it helps reduce weight. Anti-arthrosclerotic, which helps blood flow. It's an analgesic for pain, and it also protects your liver. Our computational analysis definitely shows Boswellia serrata lowers inflammation, but what we wanted to let you know is it does it through AKBA and Beta-BA. We're shown to be more effective in lowering LTB4, but not PGE2-induced inflammation. So there's different kinds of inflammation. It helps LTB4-induced inflammation. All right, thank you. Be well. Have a good evening.